Hello. Uh, I, want, I want to thank the organizers for inviting me. This talk is about the jones kruskal polynomial and minimal diagrams of surface links. Uh, this is joint work with Hans Boden. Singing the outline of the talk is first we talk about the classical teeth conjectures and then the proof, the proof of the Tate conjectures with, uh, by Kaufman, Morosugi, and Tesselwade. And then we talk about the generalization of classical links, namely links in thickened surfaces. And we talk about Jones Kruskal polynomial. And then we talk about adequate links and reduced diagrams, then main theorems, and then at the end, an application to the virtual knots and links. So Tate conjectures goes back to 1898. Uh, and the first Tate conjecture states that any reduced diagram of a classical alternating link has minimal crossing number. Here, reduced means that the diagram contains no nugatory crossing and the nugatory crossing is a crossing like as it as it in this picture that you can rotate one side of the diagram and then you can remove that crossing the second eight conjecture states that an amplifier alternating link has zero rise or more generally to uh, alternating diagram for an alternating link has the has equal rights. And finally, the third eight conjecture says that any two reduced alternating diagrams for the same link uh, are related by flight moves and by flight moves uh, a flight move is in as in this picture. In 1984, almost 100 years later, Jones introduced the polynomial invariant of links. And then in 1987, Kaufman, Rosugi, and Tesselweight applied the Jones polynomial to prove the first two Tate conjectures. And in 1993, Menasco and Tesselweight proved the Tate flight conjecture. So, why these conjectures are important? Because uh, they together gives us, um, provides an algorithm to classify alternating knots and links. And one striking consequence is the additivity of the crossing number on the connected sum for alternating links. And as we know, in general, uh, this is a difficult open problem, but it is true for alternating links. Now we talk a bit about the Jones polynomial and how we use Jones polynomial to prove the Tate conjectures. So if you have a crossing C, there are two ways to resolve that crossing, namely the A smoothing and B smoothing for that crossing. And if a diagram B has N crossings, then because each crossing has two ways of, there are two ways of resolving that crossing. So in general, so overall there are two to the N ways of resolving all the crossings and after resolving all crossings we obtain a diagram for an on-link and we call it a state. So overall we have two to the n states for a diagram D with n crossings. Now if you have a state S let's S denotes the number of cycles in S, and let A of S be the number of A smoothing, and B of S be the number of B smoothing of that state. 
the Coffin bracket is defined by this formula. We take the sum over all the crossings, all the states S of this term, A to the power of A minus B times minus A squared minus A to the minus two to the power of the number of cycles in S minus one. This is invariant under second and third trimester moves. And we multiply it by minus A to the power of minus three times the rise of the diagram. Recall the rise of a diagram is the number of positive crossings minus the number of negative crossings. And we, we with a change of variable, we replace a to the minus two by t to the one, one half. And we obtain the Jones polynomial, which is an invariant of oriented on frame links. So we have a, the a span of the Kaufman bracket. By a span, we mean a, the difference between maximum A degree and minimum A degree is less than or equal to the crossing number of the link. And a span of the Jones polynomial is less than or equal to the crossing number of link L. Now here we have the sketch of the of the date conjectures by Kaufman, Morsugi, and Thistlewaite. So if you have a diagram D and you resolve all the crossing as A smoothing, then the state that we obtain is called SA, all A smoothing state. And if you do B smoothing to all the crossings, you obtain a state which we call it SP. Now, a diagram D is called plus adequate if you, if for any state S prime that has exactly one B smoothing, the number of cycles in S prime is less than the number of cycles in SA. Similarly, a diagram D is called minus adequate if for any S state S prime, which has exactly one A smoothing, the number of cycles in that state is less than the number of cycles in SP. And if a diagram is both A and, uh, sorry, it's both plus and minus adequate, that diagram is called adequate. Why we have this definition? So, we have the, the notion of plus adequacy to guarantee the to, to, to obtain the maximum A degree. And also we have the minus A adequacy to obtain the minimum A degree. As you can see in this lemma, so suppose D is a link diagram in R2 or S2 with n crossings, then the maximum A degree of the Kaufman bracket is less than or equal to n plus two times the number of cycles in SA minus two. And if D is plus adequate, we have the equality and the minimum A degree is bigger or equal to minus N minus two times the number of cycles in SP plus two. And if D is minus adequate, you get equality. So this plus adequacy is to guarantee to get the maximum A degree in the Kaufman bracket. Remember the Kaufman bracket is defined by this formula. And as you can see, moving from SA to a state S prime with exactly one A, a smoothing, A minus B drops by two, uh, which, and if we make sure that the number of cycles is also goes down, 
then the term with maximum a degree survives. That's why we have the notion of adequacy. Now, how we use that, so if you have a reduced alternating classical link diagram, then that diagram, we can prove that the diagram is adequate. And now, uh, we need one more lemma before getting to the theorem. So, if the A is alternating, then uh, you can look at the diagram D on S2 and look at the complement and you can check your board color the complement by black and white colors. And the cycles of SA uh, bounds the white regions and the cycles of SP bounds the black regions. And also this gives the triangulation of the of s2 so if you count the number of zero one and two simplices because the Euler characteristic of s2 is equal to two you you obtain the this formula that the number of sa plus the number of cycles in sb is equal to n plus two So using this formula and the previous lemma, we can see a span of the Kaufman bracket, which is the maximum D degree minus the minimum D degree, by the lemma is equal to 2n plus 2 times the number of cycles in SA and SB minus 4. But the number of cycles in SA and plus the number of cycles in SP is equal to n plus 2. So substituting that in this formula, you get 4 times n. And that's how we prove that an alternating diagram has the minimum crossing number because the span of the Kaufman bracket is an invariant. Suppose you have another diagram, D prime, uh, with M crossings, then a span of the Kaufman bracket using D prime is less than or equal to four times M. On the other hand, it is equal to four N. So that means n is less than or equal to m. So the diagram which is alternating has minimal crossing number. Uh, before uh, moving to links in thickened surfaces, I should add that that was the proof of the first state conjecture and then you can also use the adequacy for the alternating diagrams and uh, you can prove you can prove the second date conjectures conjecture as well now here we have the generalization of the classical links to links in thickened surfaces so if sigma is a compact connected oriented surface and I is the unit interval, a link in the thickened surface sigma cross I is an embedding L of the disjoint union of M copies of S1 into sigma cross I, which we consider up to isotopy and orientation preserving homeomorphism of the pair sigma cross i uh, relative to sigma times zero. And if you project 
a link, the image of link L onto sigma, what you get is called link diagram. And the diagram is called alternating if the crossings alternate between under and over crossings if you travel along any, every component. And a link is called alternating if it admits an alternating diagram. First of all, we can extend Kaufman bracket and Jones polynomial to links in thickened surfaces in the obvious way. And but what the the invariant that you get is not that powerful. In fact, you can find many non-trivial knots in thickened surfaces with trivial Jones polynomial. Uh, but remember, we have this conjecture for Jones polynomial for the classical knots that if K is non-trivial non classical knot, then uh, Jones polynomial is non-trivial. That's an open problem. Uh, but it easily fails for knots in the thickened surfaces. That shows that Jones polynomial, if we define it in this obvious way, or not in thickened surfaces, it's not that powerful. So uh, it also cannot prove the analog of Tate conjecture for us in the setting of links in th thickened surfaces. So what we do here, we use a slight modification of the usual Jones polynomial, namely the jones kruskal polynomial. So we have the definition here. So if you have a state S for a link diagram on surface sigma, then you look at the inclusion map from the first homology of the state into the first homology of the surface sigma with Z2 coefficients. And denote the, the dimension of kernel of this inclusion map by K of S and dimension of the image by R of S, and we call R of S the homological rank of the state S. You can use the rank nullity theorem to see K plus R is equal to the uh, first Betty number of S, which is the number of cycles in S. And we define the homological Kaufman bracket by this formula. So you can see we replace minus a to the minus two, minus a squared to the power of the number of cycles minus one for the usual Jones, uh, for the usual Kaufman bracket by minus a to the power of minus two, minus a squared to the power of k minus one, and we add an extra variable z to the power of the homological rank. This is called the Jones group. This is called the homological Kaufman bracket, and if you multiply it again by minus a to the minus three times the rise of the diagram, and then do the substitution of a squared equals to t to the minus one half, you get the, you get a polynomial in variables t and z, which we call it jones kruskal polynomial. Here's an example of a link in torus. So, here is the diagram. If you identify sides and the top and bottom, you get the torus. So this is a diagram on a torus. It's a diagram of an alternating three crossing knot. And it, the rise of this diagram is equal to minus one. And if you 
use the usual Kaufman bracket, you get minus a to the minus 3, and that means the usual Jones polynomial is trivial, is equal to 1. Even if you use more powerful invariant, namely the Kovano homology, we still get the trivial Kovano homology for this knot. On the other hand, if you use the Jones Kruskal polynomial, here we have all eight states for this diagram. It has three crossings, so it has two, two, three, which is eight uh, states. And if you calculate the K and R for each state, then you can see that the jones kruskal polynomial is the following polynomial. And if you look at the span of this polynomial, it is equal to two, which is the crossing number of this diagram, which is three minus the genus of the surface, which is one. So that formula suggests that we might be able to use jones kruskal polynomial to obtain the analog of eight conjectures in this setting. So to do that, we first, we need to define the reduced links and surfaces. So if D is a link diagram on a surface sigma, the crossing X is called nugatory. If you can find a simple closed curve in sigma, which separates sigma and intersects the diagram D in only at point X, as depicted in as depicted in this picture. So we define a new notion of reduce. A diagram is called reduce if you don't have any nugatory crossings and plus it is cellularly embedded. Now what cellularly embedded means, means that you look at the diagram D, you look at the complement of it in sigma, and the complement should be a union of disks. In that case, we call the diagram D cellularly embedded. So just like before, we need appropriate notion of adequacy in the setting to guarantee that for adequate diagrams, the maximum A degree and the minimum A degree survives in the Kaufman bracket. So we define a diagram as A adequate if, if you have a status for any status prime with exactly one D smoothing, K of that state should be less than or equal to K of uh, SA. And similarly, we define B adequate. If you take any status prime uh, with exactly one A smoothing, then K of S prime should be less than or equal to K of SB. And the diagram is called adequate if it is both A and B adequate. So the first proposition that we have here is that if you have any reduced alternating diagram D on a surface sigma, then that should that diagram should be adequate. And a theorem that we have here is that suppose sigma ha is a surface with genus G and L is a link in sigma cross I, uh, which admits a connected reduced alternating diagram D on sigma with N crossings, then a span of the homological Kaufman bracket is equal to 4n minus 4 times g.
So just like before, we have this lemma. If D is a diagram on sigma with n crossings, then maximum a degree in the homological Kaufman bracket is less than or equal to n plus two times k of s a minus two. And if D is A adequate, you get the equality. And also for uh, the, the minimum A degree of in, in the homological Kaufman bracket is bigger or equal to minus N minus two K of SB plus two. And if D is B adequate, you get the equality. So we we also need the, so we also need the following lemma, which is called the dual state lemma. So if you have a state S, then the dual to that state is a state obtained by changing any A smoothing inside S to a B smoothing, and changing any B smoothing in S to an A smooth. So suppose D is a connected link diagram with N crossing on surface sigma. And suppose G, suppose sigma has genus G, then for any state S, you have the number of cycles in S plus the number of cycles in the dual of S is less than or equal to N plus two. And in addition, if D is cellularly embedded, we have K of S plus K of the dual is less than or equal to N plus two minus two G. So similar to the classical case, the theorem that we get here is that any reduced alternating link diagram on a surface has minimal crossing number and any two reduced alternating diagrams for the same link on a surface have the same right. So one application of this is to prove the Tate conjectures to for the virtual knots, and what is virtual knot? Virtual knot is a knot, a knot or link, is a link is in, in a thickened surface sigma cross i, considered up to isotopy, homeomorphism, and stabilization, meaning adding a handle to sigma, and destabilization, which means removing a handle from sigma, which is, this join from the link diagram. Now we can, so the jones kruskal polynomial is not invariant on their stabilization and destabilization. That means it's not an invariant for virtual knots, so we cannot directly use that to prove the Tate conjectures. However, so Cooperberg has a theorem which says every stable equivalence class of links in thickened surfaces has a unique irreducible representative. So because of this, we can define jones kruskal polynomial or homological Kaufman bracket for virtual links. So you just take the you just take a diagram with minimal, a minimal genus diagram for your virtual knot and then calculate the jones kruskal polynomial for that diagram and that is a well-defined invariant of virtual knots. So theorem that we have here is that if K is a virtual knot, 
with adequate diagram B on a minimal genus surface, then any diagram D prime for K has crossing number bigger or equal to the crossing number of D. And if D1 and D2 are two adequate diagrams with minimal genus for the same virtual knot, then the number of crossings are equal and the rise are equal. So we use the following facts to prove the first and second head conjecture for virtual knots. Uh, the first one is any minimal crossing diagram of a virtual knot has minimal genus. This was proved by Mantra using parity. So how we use this to prove Tate conjectures for virtual knots, we say uh, take an alternating diagram for, for an alternating virtual knot. And on the surface, you can you can you can uh, represent that diagram on a surface. So as a knot in a thickened surface, that diagram has minimal crossing. And because of the Manturov theorem, it also has the minimal genus. So the jones kruskal polynomial is well defined for that. So combining these together, you get the Tate conjectures. However, we don't have that the, uh, we don't have that result for virtual links. Uh, on the other hand, we have the following result. If you have alternating diagram of a virtual knot or link, it has minimal genus, but we use it, we use TG hyperbolic structures or signatures to prove that. So we can use to you can we can combine these together to prove the Tate conjectures for virtual knots. The first approach would work for virtual links if we had the following conjectures. The conjecture that if you have a virtual link, then any minimal crossing diagram for it necessarily has minimal genus. But because we don't have this conjecture, we use the uh, we use other approaches to prove the state conjectures for virtual links. Thank you.